God gave me this song. Yet it is a cry from the hearts of the people to the throne room of God, to the throne room of grace. It simply is, thy kingdom come. Thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory. The heavens, the heavens declare the splendor, the splendor of your majesty. And the earth, the earth resounds, resounds with the praises, with the praises of your people. The sun, the moon. The sun, the moon. The stars the workmanship. are the workmanship of your hands. We say thine is the kingdom, the power, the power and the glory. The heavens, the heavens declare the splendor of your majesty. And the whole earth, the earth resounds, resounds with the praises. The the sun, the moon, the stars, the stars are the workmanship of your hands. We, your people, we want to see your people. Your kingdom come, your glory fall over the earth. Let it be done, Let it be done. here on earth. earth as it is done all over we heaven. Want to see. We want to see your kingdom come, your glory fall. That's our desire, All that's our heart's heaven. prayer. Oh, we all came in together in this place because we desire to see the move of God. We desire to have the presence of God. Jesus said, when you pray, pray in this manner, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth, even as it is in heaven. Forever, O oh God, your word is established in the heavenly places. And we want to see that word is done. For when God rises, everything else has got to be silent. I rise, O oh Lord, into your resting place. Let all the earth be silent in your presence. Help me say The earth. the earth be silent, be silent in your presence. We want to see your kingdom come, your glory fall. From the one who is kneeling earth, down to the one whose hands are lifted up, here on earth, the one whose heart is open. Is done, we just want to see heaven, your kingdom come. We want to see your kingdom come, your glory fall. Your glory fall. To live without your presence, we don't want to be without your power. So, we want everything that is in the heavens to be done right here. So, we cry, Your kingdom come, your glory fall over the earth. Let it be done here on earth as it is done. Let it be done. We say, oh, 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 oh. We cry, oh, It's the sound of the spirit. It's the sound from our heart. It's the sound of our desire. To raise your voice. This is our prayer today. Because we want to see uh, from Africa to Asia. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for waking up this morning. It's good to see you alert and awake. We thank God because He has kept us, He has given us another day. 
we rejoice we are glad amen in the name of jesus christ this is the covenant channel we gather here every day monday to friday from 6 a.m to 7 a.m for prayer and the word of god and i'm glad that you're awake i'm glad that you have woken up and i'm glad you are ready to pray in the name of jesus christ i want us to praise god i want us to exalt him i want us to magnify him because he's a worthy god because he's a faithful god because he's here with us and he keeps his word and his promises are yes and amen lift up your voice with me and exalt him father in jesus mighty name we exalt you we give you glory and we give you honor because there is none like you you are worthy of praise you are worthy of honor you are worthy of our attention and we praise you this morning receive our sacrifice today oh god receive our thanksgiving today oh god for there is none like you oh god there is none that is comparable to you oh god you are worthy this morning you are exalted in our midst you are exalted from our hearts you are exalted above everything you are exalted above every situation you are exalted above every challenge that we have gone through oh god there is no one like you Abba father there is no one like you oh god you are in a class all by yourself and we honor you for that we praise and glorify your holy name who is there like you jesus who is there that is comparable to you oh god we worship you my god Le kanama shata baga zanda le karabaga zega lebo shire ba yala gabo zikande yala gabo raya lamande makaza gata ba yala gabo raya. We give you glory, Jesus. We give you praise. There is none like you. You are worthy of glory, Lord. You are worthy of honor. You are worthy of adoration, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We magnify your name. You are awesome in this place. You are exalted in our hearts, O oh God. You are lifted in our midst today. We praise and glorify you. There is no one like you, Jesus. There is no one like you, Lord. You deserve our worship and praise. You deserve adoration today. We bless your name. We adore you, Lord. You are worthy, O oh God. There is none like you. Rimala Mashia Namasikaya Labosi Mandere Bolande. We worship your majesty. We give you glory and honor. We give you thanks, O oh God. We praise you, Jesus. We worship your holy name. We glorify your wonderful name. There is none like you, Jehovah God. There is none like you, mighty God. There is none like unto you, Jehovah. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you this morning. We love you, Jesus. We magnify your name. We adore your holy name. We say that you are worthy. We thank you, Holy Spirit of the living God, because you lead us to pray the mind of God. You lead us to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you because your counsel is with us. Thank you because you are with us in this place. Thank you because your grace is with us, Lord God. We praise and magnify your holy name. What an awesome God you are. What a faithful God you are. We worship and praise you. We give you glory and we give you honor because you are incomparable, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. We give thanks to the Lord. We praise him and we magnify him because he's a worthy God in jesus mighty name i want us to go to psalm 103 in the name of jesus god is good he deserves more honor and adoration god has loved you he has forgiven you he has forgiven you let's never forget the principles the basics of the word of god psalm 103 the psalms 103 the bible says let all that i am praise the lord let all that i am meaning your spirit your soul and your body you give god the package let all that I am praise the Lord with my whole heart. I will praise his holy name. Verse 2, the Bible says in the name of Jesus, let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he has done for me. 
God has done good things in your life. And we want to list those things that God has done in your life because he is a good God for all the good things he has done in your life. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. Mm -hmm. He ransoms me from death and surrounds uh, me with love and tender mercies. I want us to just stay at that verse 3 because of his forgiveness in our lives. We drift a lot of times. We sin against God a lot of times. And this morning, I want us to thank him for loving us and for forgiving us. And when we are still at that, I want us to ask God for mercy, for forgiveness of every manner of sin, where we have sinned against him, where we have gone in our own understanding, where we have led ourselves where he needed to lead us. I want us to ask for his mercy this morning in the name of Jesus Christ and appreciate him for forgiving us because the Bible says he forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases that verse 3 is what we are praying this morning father in the name of jesus we give you glory and we praise you this morning we exalt and adore you because there is none like unto you O oh god you are the giver of life you forgive us all sins your word is telling us this morning we are praising you with all our hearts for all the good things you have done. And one of the good things that you have done in our lives this morning is forgiving us all our sins uh, and healing every disease in our lives. Uh. We praise you for that, oh God. We praise you for forgiving us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, Lord God, that we could not die for ourselves. Our blood would not have been worthy enough for the Father to accept as a sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for us. Thank you for living your glory. Thank you for living eternity. Thank you for accepting to die for us. Thank you for taking our sin and nailing our sin on the cross. Thank you for your blood, your powerful blood that forgives and cleanses all manner of sin. We thank you for that. We do not forget. We do not forget the sacrifice this morning. We appreciate you for the blood, the blood of Jesus that washes every sin, that washes every sin from our lives. And we are repenting this morning from all manner of sin and asking you in the mighty name of Jesus that you will forgive us of all manner of iniquity forgive us of all manner of sin as individuals as families as a nation we ask you this morning that you will forgive us oh god creating us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us like David would pray. Creating us a clean heart. That our hearts shall be pure before you. That we will walk with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, because the Father does not look unto us uh, based on our righteousness. Uh, but based on the righteousness that we acquire. That we receive our salvation uh, through Jesus Christ. Uh, thank you Jesus for your love. Thank you Jesus for accepting to die for us. Uh, thank you for the forgiveness of sin. Uh, thank you for the remission of sin for our sake. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, uh, we give you glory and we give you honor. For there is none like unto you. There is none that is comparable to you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, uh, thank you for healing us, oh God. Thank you for healing every sickness. Uh, thank you for healing our bodies. Uh, that we walk in health. Uh, we are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Uh, in Jesus Jesus mighty name le makarabo shakata bagazanda le kenina mashire boyalaga bozanda receive it we pray this morning because we give it with gratitude in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus God is good God is faithful and he's a forgiving God in our lives in Jesus mighty name father we bless your name amen second kings chapter 6 verse 5 praise be to God hallelujah I want us to read that verse, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 5. The Bible says, this is when the sons of the prophet wanted to expand, I wanted to grow. And we can just read that verse 2. We had read it the other day up there in Jesus' name, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 2. Let us go to the Jordan River where there are plenty of logs. They wanted to expand. There we can build a new place for us to meet. All right, he told them. Go ahead. Verse 3, the Bible says, please come with us. Someone suggested, I will, he said. This is a prophet who accepted to go with them. Verse 4, the Bible says, so he went with them. 
when they arrived at the Jordan, they began cutting down trees. They began with what their agenda was for building, verse 6, verse 5. But as one of them was cutting a tree, his axe head fell into the river. Oh, sir, he cried, it was borrowed, it was borrowed, it was borrowed. I want us to pray in that verse this morning that God shall cause us to get a restoration of the things that we have lost. It was borrowed. You know, anything borrowed can just spoil your name. Anything that is not yours is never yours. And you can spoil your name just by getting into debt, by just borrowing things and get yourself into a moment of believing God for restoration. And I want us to pray this morning that God shall restore everything that was lost in our life. Anything that we have gotten that is not ours, that we have lost. I want us to pray for restoration. God is able to restore your ears, able to restore your time. God is able to cause you to overtake the people that have gone before you when you believe him to restore you, when you believe him to cause you to walk in a higher speed, to catch up with the years that you have wasted. I want us to pray for restoration in our lives of anything that is lost, of time that is lost, of money that has been lost by his grace. Not because we deserve it, but by his grace. I want us to ask God for restoration. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we know that you are a restoring God. We know that you are a God who hears prayer. And you say in your word, even before we pray, you hear and you answer. And we are praying in faith this morning, knowing that you are able to hear and answer us. We are asking Jehovah God that you will restore to us what the caterpillar has stolen, what the caterpillar has eaten. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, for when a thief is caught, he shall repay ten times. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are praying today that according to your word, uh, like the sons of the prophet had lost their acts, uh, we are praying, Lord God, uh, for restoration supernaturally. Only you who is able to restore our lives. Uh, we are asking of you this morning, uh, not because we deserve it, uh, but by your grace and by your mercy, that you will restore our life, uh, that our health shall be restored. Uh, those who have had broken bodies, uh, I am praying for restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, restore their strength. Uh, restore their graces. Uh, their strength in Jesus name and restore ministries in this season uh, restore callings and assignments in this season uh, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ uh, them that feel they are away from God uh, I am praying this morning uh, restore their hearts uh, and join them with you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ uh, that they shall be connected to you again uh, they shall get back to you again uh, in Jesus mighty name uh, restore our love for you oh God restore our union with you oh God. Restore our intimacy with you, O oh God. Uh, our intimacy with you, Jehovah God. Our communion, our love to intermingle with you uh, and to fellowship with you, O oh God. Restore that we pray today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, you are a restoring God. Restore broken families, my father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, uh, restore children back to their fathers and to their mothers. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, uh, draw the hearts of the sons back to their fathers. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, uh, we are praying for restoration, O oh God. We are praying for restoration, O oh God. Makata makaze galebo shire bogo zande manda makaya la gabo zanda le kanama shata baga zanda restore we pray this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ restore Lord God every year that we wasted my God in the lack of knowledge and understanding because we know you are merciful we ask you O oh God the God of all mercy that you will restore to us. What the caterpillar has eaten, what the canker worms have eaten, because you are a faithful God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, make Kalabo Shirebolanda. Restore to us, we pray today. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Luke chapter 4, verse 17. In the mighty name of Jesus, God is good. God is a restoring God. God restore your life and your business. And as we pray, believe it and it will work in your life in Jesus' name. It's only what we believe that works. If you shall believe, all things shall be possible with you. So as you pray, we pray in faith. We don't pray in fear. 
We don't pray in stress. We don't pray in unrest. We pray in rest, knowing that God works, God moves, God does things in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Luke chapter 4, verse 17, I want us to pray for our callings, our assignments, and our purposes. The scroll of Isaiah the prophet was handed to him, to Jesus. He had gone to the temple and the scroll was handed to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where this was written. He unrolled it and this is what was written where he opened verse 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim the captives we to, to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free. I am seeing a clear definition of purpose. I am seeing a clear definition of assignment for Jesus. The Bible said it has been given a scroll and it's opened it and this was what was written for him. The spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. I want us to pray that God will cause us to have our purpose and our vision in life as clear as Jesus would read it. That it shall be clear for us. That we will not keep trying many things. It was clear, the Bible is saying, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. Good news to the poor. Send me to proclaim the captives to be released. That the blind will see that the oppressed will be set free. Very clear. I want us to pray for clarity. Clarity for our purpose. Clarity for our vision. Maybe you are praying with me. You are aware of what you're supposed to be. Some of us are clear. Some of us are not too clear. Some of us are clueless. This is why we are praying this prayer this morning. That it shall be clear for us what our assignment is. We shall not just be following after people. We shall not just follow what people are doing and think we are on the right path, but we shall do exactly what we were sent on this earth to do in Jesus' mighty name. It was clear for Jesus, so it can be clear for you as you pray in faith this morning in Jesus' name. We pray in faith over here, and that's what I want you to do right now. Pray in faith. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray to you in faith. We trust in you. We believe in your word. And your word is reminding us this morning that when Jesus went into the synagogue, he was given the scroll. And when he opened it, it was open and he saw what was written of him, of his assignment. We are praying this morning that your assignment shall be clear for us. That your assignment for us on this earth shall not be something we are trying to figure out. Something we are trying to get. Something we are trying to ask people around. That it shall be clear for us. We know that there are things that we have acquired by association. There are things and traits that we have acquired and skills we have acquired by association. We appreciate that. But we are praying this morning that it shall be clear for us. There shall be a clarity for us in the name of Jesus of what our assignment is, of what our calling is. In Jesus' mighty name, we shall not guess anymore. We shall not wander around anymore. It shall be open for us. Uh, open our eyes to see what the natural eyes cannot see, to see what the natural mind cannot comprehend. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, uh, help us, we pray, Jehovah God. Help us, we pray, by your Holy Spirit. Reveal Reveal it to us in dreams. Reveal it to us through your word. Reveal it to us through people. We are open, oh God. We are ready, oh God. Help us, we pray. Everybody praying with me this morning. Open their eyes, oh God, in ways that only you can, in mysterious ways. Cause us, Jehovah God, to see it. See it clearly. And we are also praying, Lord God, as you reveal purpose for us, uh, that you will give us the grace to walk in it thereby. We will have the grace to walk in it. Uh, we will have the grace to walk in it. Uh, we will have the grace to follow through. We will have the grace like Jesus had uh, when you send him to the wilderness uh, and you send him by the grace of God and the spirit of God push him to the wilderness uh, because it was ordained of you. We are praying, Lord God, we will 
will not run away from the wilderness that you put us through uh, because it has a purpose uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, give us discerning hearts uh, to know that the wilderness is of God, that the wilderness is of God, that the wilderness is led of the spirit. Uh, we will not fight the wilderness. Uh, we will not fight the seasons that look like they're down, uh, that the season that look like there's no God. In Jesus' name, uh, give us discerning hearts. Uh, give us discerning hearts uh, to know what you are doing uh, at what time in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, like the sons of Issachar, they knew the times uh, and the seasons that God needed to do what he needed to do. We are praying, Lord God, like the sons of Issachar, we will know what to do at the right time. Makayama shade Le kata makazada, le kere bogo shiere boya lagabo zanda, mande gaza galabo shakata boya lagabo zanda. We will not miss out our timing uh, when you reveal purpose to us, uh, when we reveal what we need to do, uh, line upon line. Uh, precept upon precept uh, shall be how we will move. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, uh, we will be led of the spirit of God, uh, not ourselves, uh, not pressure, not the community around us, uh, but by the spirit of the living God. Uh, lead us by your spirit uh, as you lead us into purpose uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, we thank you because we shall be easy to be led. We shall be lady. We shall be ready to be led of you. We shall be flexible to be led of you. In the mighty name of Jesus. We praise you this morning, Lord God, and we magnify your holy name because your spirit shall guide us into all truth. In Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. Glory to God. First Kings chapter 19, verse 11. 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 The Bible says, Go, First Kings 19, 11. Go out and stand before me on the mountain, the Lord told him. This is God talking to Elijah. And, uh, and Eli as Elijah stood there, the Lord passed by, and a mighty windstorm hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast that the rocks were torn loose. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord in the earthquake, verse 12. And after the earthquake, there was a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was a sound of general whisper. Mm -hmm. I want us to go back to that verse 11. We are seeing the different ways there was shaking and there was, uh, I mean, a wind, and then there was a whisper, and God was in the whisper. But we are looking at this scenario that looks very terrifying. The Bible is telling us, and Elijah stood there, the Lord passed by, and a mighty windstorm hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast that the rocks were torn loose. At times we face storms and situations that look so, so negative. They look like they want to kill us. They look like they want to destroy us. But in there, God is part of it. God is part of that shocking moment. God is part of that news that is not pleasant. God is that part of that shaking that doesn't look like it has a direction. God is in it. We are going to pray that first part. Then we will go to the latter part in Jesus' mighty name. I want us to pray that we will have a discerning heart. A discerning heart to be able to know that no matter what circumstances we face in this life, that we will know that God is in there. We will be sure that God is somewhere in there. It was terrible. It was shaking. Rocks were breaking. But God was coming somewhere at the end of it. I want us to pray for a discerning heart. At times you're beginning business. But by your beginning business, you begin by failing. The money that you had borrowed to, to, to take care of that business all goes down. You don't know how to pay your business, but probably that is the business you need to stick on. Amen. I want us to pray that we shall have discerning hearts. Amen. 
you're frustrated about your son. You want to throw them out of your house because their character is out of hand. But you do not know God is working in that child. You do not know that they're about to have an encounter with God. Hold on. That can only take a discerning heart. I want us to pray this morning that we will have a discerning heart. We will not run because trouble is on our way, because the rocks are raging, because the trouble is too loud. I want us to pray we will hold on because God is about to show up in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the privilege to pray to you, to call on your name. And we thank you because you appeared to your servant, the prophet, you were not in the shaking. You were not in the wind. You were not in the wind. You were not in the mountain storm. You were not in that. But you were coming. Your voice was somewhere behind. Your voice was going to come in a few minutes. We are praying, Lord God, for discerning hearts. We know we walk at times with our natural eyes, but you command us in your word. Spiritual people walk in the spirit. We don't walk by the leading of the flesh. We are praying, Lord God, that every day of our lives we shall be discerning. We are praying for a discerning heart. We are praying for a discerning heart every day in the mighty name of Jesus that we shall discern what you are doing. We shall discern when you are part of it. We shall discern when it's you and when it's the devil as well in the name of Jesus but when it's you Lord God we are praying for a discerning heart we are also praying Lord God for the gift of patience the spirit of patience we shall be patient a little more we shall be a little patient to wait on your voice because you may not come in that thunder you may not speak in that thunderous moment but we will need to wait a little more in the name of Jesus a mende be shikata magaze be yere bolanda le kana mashaka tabagaza de le kere bogozi kanda ya labo shire bolagaranda a discerning heart is what we are praying this morning in the spirit of patience in the name of Jesus we will not lose it when we're supposed to be waiting we will not be panicking when we are supposed to be waiting because waiting time is not wasted time in the name of Jesus le kana mashara bagaza de le kani ana makaze gata balagada da la kanda baga zegere bo shiere bo lade ze kanama kade bege zika ya labo shada le kanama shata baga zanda le kete bogo zandi alabo raya give us a designing heart and give us the patience to wait on in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah to the Lamb of God hallelujah to the Lamb of God we continue to read on after the wind we are still in first Kings chapter 19 verse 11 that latter part the Bible says Hallelujah. And as Elijah stood there, the Lord passed by, and a mighty windstorm hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast that the rocks were torn loose, but the Lord was not in the wind. The Lord was not in the wind. The Lord was not in the wind. There's a particular way we know God comes in our lives. There's a particular way we know how God speaks to us, but he changes ways. He changes his methods. So we continue to read, after the wind, there was the earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. Yes, God reveals to you. God provided for you through your uncle. God provided for you through your boss the other time. But it doesn't need to come in that format. So you don't need to wait for them at the door. Amen. The next part, as we begin to wind up, praise be to God. After the earthquake, there was a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was a sound of a gentle whisper. That was God in the whisper. I want us to pray that we will appreciate the different forms of God, the different methods that God speaks to us. We will not be rigid. We will not be rigid to say that God does not speak to me through prophets. I'm not a dreamer. So I had this dream. I just ignore it because I don't dream. God could be speaking to you through dreams for the first time. So we will not ignore how he will speak to us because we are familiar with how he has been speaking to us over the times. We will be open. Amen. We'll be open to diversity. We will be open to the ways of God. We'll be open to the things that God does and how he does things because God is very creative. Hallelujah. He can speak to you through your own child. He speaks through donkeys. He can speak through a tree. Amen. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because you speak to us. We thank you because you speak to us through your word. You speak to us through dreams. You speak to us through visions. You speak to us through prophets. You speak to us through apostles, through our friends, through nature, through, through uh, the buildings that we meet at, through people who don't even know God. You speak to us through many ways. We are praying this morning that we will appreciate the diversity of how you speak, the diversity of how you commune with us, and that we will embrace it and walk in obedience thereof. In the mighty name of Jesus, we will not be rigid to say that you did not speak to us because you did not speak to us in the way that we are familiar with. We are praying, Lord God, we shall not be stiff naked. We shall not be stiff naked. We shall not be hardened in our hearts. We, oh God, that our hearts shall be flexible. We shall be flexible to listen to you, to obey you, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the different ways you come, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you this morning and we give you glory because you will help us by your Holy Spirit to design you well and to not be, 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 be rigid, but to be flexible, to hear you even when you come through a whisper in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you this morning and we give you glory for giving us the grace to pray, for helping us and giving us answers to the things that we need solutions for in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord, for you are with us. Thank you because your grace and your spirit is with us this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We go to the word of God. My time is, uh, is running very quickly. We need to go to the word of God this morning. And yesterday we began to talk about the force of faith. The other day, not yesterday, the force of faith. We began to talk about the force of faith. And we read the book of First John chapter 5 verse uh, 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 4 to 5. First John chapter 5 verse 4 to 5. We are still there but we will go further in Jesus mighty name. Glory to God. Glory to God. For every child of God defeat this evil world. Uh -huh. The world is evil. The enemy is already thrown in here. So he has his own schemes. He has his own ways. And the Bible is telling us mm -hmm, that every child of God defeats every child of God. Every You are part of every. Amen. You are part of every. Don't exclu exclude yourself. Don't exclude yourself. When people are winning and they are succeeding, you are part of that because you are a child of God. For every child of God defeats this evil world. And we achieve this victory through our faith. So that's where we are. We achieve this victory that is written in the word of God, that is declared about the children of God. We achieve this victory through our faith, through our faith. And we talked, we we're talking about the force of faith. This is part two, that we need to remember that faith is the best weapon that you have as a believer when you're facing life, when you're going into a world that is, uh, that is very harsh. And we covered two things that I will go through very quickly. And we realize you need to learn to build your faith by listening, reading the word of God yourself. Listening, reading the word of God yourself. Faith comes. We read Romans chapter 10, verse 17, a verse that we love to know. Re Romans 10, verse 17, faith comes by hearing. Romans 10, verse 17, faith comes. It's not your responsibility. It's not you to manufacture faith. Faith comes. But how does it come? The responsibility you have there in that verse is you to go to the word of God, get it yourself. Grow it yourself within you. I can speak to you every day, but if you don't go to the word of God, there's a lot that you're going to miss out. I can only tell you a bit. I can only have a little time to speak out the word of God. I can only pick up a few scriptures here and there because of time limitation. But you have yourself, you have the word of God. Go to it. So we agreed we need to listen to the word of God. Number two, we agreed you need to listen to positive reports. The Bible says, we, we, what, what report shall we believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. Where do we get the report of the Lord? The report of the Lord is in the word of God. So locate the report of the Lord. Report, re, roca, locate, locate, just say rocket, forgive me. Locate the report of the Lord in the word of God. Locate it, amen. What is the report of the Lord concerning your health? What is the report of the Lord concerning your finances? What is the report of the Lord concerning your marriage? What is the report of the Lord concerning your children? Amen. 
You've got to locate the report. You've got to also locate the report from the people you listen to. Who have you been listening to? Who has been affecting your faith constantly? Praise be to God. Second Kings chapter 4 verse 4, Elijah told the woman, lock the door. Lock yourself from the influence of the people around you. Because the miracle we are about to do has not been seen before. We are about to manufacture oil. We are, you are about to be a distributor of oil in this village, in this community. And this might be affected by allowing external forces and voices to affect what you are about to perform right now. So lock the door. Some of you must listen to new people and forget the voices you've been hearing for a very long time that have not been building faith over your life. The doubts that have come to you are because of the things you've been listening to, the people you've been listening to. You must consider who speaks to you, whose word matters to you is important, whose word is low to you. I know there are people that you say yes, sir, to very quickly. You don't even consider what they say. I have such. I have people that I don't double check what they say. It's not good. The Bereans would go back to the word of God and confirm that what was said is the word of God. So be that kind of a person that listens to the right people, listens to the right reports, hears the right reports, and goes forth to activate that and work that in their life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. It may not be easy. It may not be easy to walk in the force of faith. We are talking about the force of faith. Amen. We must be able to overcome every resistance that works against the force of faith. And this is how we walk through that. This is how we walk through that resistance, that war that comes so that we are not walking in the force of faith, the force that we need. And we said faith is trusting God enough to act on what he has said. Trusting him enough to act on what he has said. Praise be to God. Amen and amen. So number one, we got to know how to do that. How do we fight that battle of the resistance that keeps coming? We go to Mark chapter 11 verse 24 today in the name of Jesus Christ. A verse that we know that we love in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. So we're going to talk about talking. We're going to talk about your confession today. Because it's important for you to walk in the force of faith. You must speak out the word of God. You must declare. You must confess it. Don't be quiet. Don't be cool about it. Don't be sweet about it. Speak it aloud. Praise be to God. Have you seen the people around your life who are big mouth? They acquire things very quickly. They get things very quickly. They speak things all over the place. They speak this faith that we keep saying. But when you're too quiet, your quietness has cost you the trouble you're in right now. You are being sweet about the word of God and nice about the word of God. You just keep saying, it's okay. If it comes to pass, it's okay. Um, if it's written, it's written. It will come to pass. No, 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 no. We must declare the word of God. Mark eleven twenty four. 24, the Bible says, I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you receive, it will be yours. We keep reading. There are conditions. We will not go into that. But when you are praying, fast, forgive anyone who you are holding grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins. I don't want us to go into that, but I want us to just take verse 24. The Bible is telling us, I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you have received, it shall be yours. It shall be yours. I want us to go to 2 Corinthians. We are saying if you pray and you believe, it shall be yours. Are we agreeing on that? So I want us to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14. In Jesus' mighty name, we'll read the, uh, verse 13 to 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and 14. Then we will read that from the TPT Bible. I like that version for this verse in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible says, when I have the same spirit of faith, we have the same spirit of faith that is described in the scriptures when it says, First, I believed, then I spoke in faith. We have just said earlier on, whatever you pray, if you believe, you shall have it. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13 is saying, and I want you to follow closely, we have the same spirit of faith. That is described in the scriptures when it says, first I believed, then I spoke. We don't speak what we don't believe. It's not about positive declaration. No, no, no. We must believe first for us to speak. Okay? And we can only speak, we can only believe what we have en uh, encountered, what we know. 
That's why I began by telling you, you must be able to go to the word of God. Where will you pick what is there for you to believe? You can only pick it from hearing me and believing what I'm saying is the word of God or going to the word of God and singing for yourself for you to believe. Praise be to God. So you will not be able to confess and to speak what you have not believed. We are still on that verse. Praise be to God. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13. We have the same spirit of faith. So it's a spirit of faith. You're talking about the force of faith. That is described in the scriptures when it says, first I believed, therefore then I spoke. I believed, therefore I spoke. So we just don't throw words around. We say, that is my kite, that's my car, that's my land. No, 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 no. That's why you have not been having it. There is no enough uh, storage. There is no enough stamina. I don't even know. There is no enough tank. The tank is not full enough. The tank is not full enough. You have not come to the place of agreeing with the word of God being convinced enough by the word of God for you to declare it. So you must first believe for you to speak in faith. We continue to read. So we also first believe, then we speak in faith. We first believe, then we speak in faith. We are still reading that verse. Now verse 14. We do this because we are convinced. We must know the reason why we are believing and speaking. All right? We must know the reason. That's what the version, I love this version for this. We do this because we are convinced that he who raised Jesus will raise us up with him. And together we will be brought into his presence. My portion is that first part, verse 14. We do this. What is this we are saying? We had earlier said, first I believed, then I spoke in faith. And then we continue to say, so we also first believe, then we speak. We're talking about confession today. Verse 14 is telling us, why do we do this? You must have a reason why you do things. You must have a why you do things. That's why you will be on things when you have a good understanding. Good understanding gives you solid foundation. That's why the word of God is our solid foundation. Because we know what we believe. We believe right. Praise be to God. Because, so we do this because we are convinced that he who raised Jesus Let's forget that last verse. We do this because we are convinced. I want us to dwell on that part. We are convinced. Amen. It's only people who are convinced that talk with confidence. It's only people who are convinced of something that talk like they know they can pass through this wall. Amen. I mean, Jesus will tell the disciples, you will destroy this temple and in three days I will rebuild it. Ha. He knew he's going to die and he's going to resurrect. Look at the conviction that he had. The reason why you don't speak by faith is because you're not convinced enough. You're not convinced. Why are you not convinced? Because you have not encountered the word of God. It has not become life for you. It has not become true for you. That's why I will send you back to the word of God. We are talking about the force of faith. This force of faith causes you to overcome every obstacle. It causes you to walk over every resistance and gravity that keeps pulling you down in life. You will win by the force of faith. You will win. You will overcome everything by the force of faith in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Praise be to God. Hallelujah to God. Amen. And it's a journey. It's a journey. You got to begin somewhere. Don't just say people know scriptures. Will I catch up? And it's not about knowing scriptures and memorizing and speaking them aloud. It's believing it. It's going into the word of God and saying, wow, this is what the word of God talks about my health. I believe it. I receive it. You keep reading it until it becomes part of you. It dissolves every other belief that you had. Every other thing that had filled your mind. It becomes what is top cream on your mind. What is top cream on your mind? What is your daily meditation? Is it fear? Is it intimidation by the enemy? What are you expecting from God? Allow the word of God to be supreme in your thinking. To be supreme on your mind. Let it be what convinces you. Let the word of God convince you. We have allowed circumstances to convince us for long. We have allowed people to tell us about our health. We have allowed the doctors to tell us about our health. Have you ever gone to the doctor? Has the, has the doctor ever told you what you're sick? I mean, you came walking into hospital. The doctor tells you you're supposed to be admitted. I mean, immediately you're told those words. And this is what happens to us every day. Immediately the doctor tells you that you get seriously sick. Now you become an admission case. Why? Words are life. 
Words are powerful. The, the Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue. That's why the people who are full of the word of God know how to talk, know how a, their confession is. How has your confession been? Can you be able to check and marry where your confession comes from? What drives what you speak? Amen. Where does what you speak come from? Does it come from history? Does it come from what your parents kept telling you? That you're useless? That you're not intelligent? You're not smart like your sister? You're not smart like your brother? Are those the words that keep speaking to you? You can change that. You can change that by feeding your spirit man, by feeding your mind with the right information, with the right content. The purity of the word of God cannot be questioned. Purity of the word of God is standard forever. Feed yourself with the word of God. You will see what you think is going to change. You will see your confession change in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's go to James chapter 1 verse 2. Praise be to God. James chapter 1 verse 2. The Bible says very clearly. James chapter 1 verse 2. The word of God is amazing. The word of God can change your confidence. Can change the things that intimidate you. Can change how you talk. How you walk. And how you live your life. By knowing it. James chapter 1 verse 2. Dear brothers. James chapter 1 verse 2. And sisters. When troubles come. You, your way. Consider it as an opportunity for great joy. This is not how we live. This is not the common day lifestyle. This is not how we handle things. Let's be honest. It's not the way we handle things. But there are people, the people of faith, who handle things differently. And I want to show you that the people who have enjoyed the word of God, drew, drawn life from the word of God, are able to look at this scripture, embrace it, and walk in it thereby. The Bible says, dear brothers and sisters, this was the admonition of by, by James. When troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. You cannot consider it an opportunity until you have come to a place where the word of God has convinced you to know that the Bible says where there is a casting down, we say there is a lifting up. This is a place, this is a mentality of people who have married their life, their thinking with the word of God until when situations come, they say, this is my rising. When I see storms, I say, this storm is pushing me to the next level. This storm is giving me better speed. Hallelujah. When you see storms, you don't see death. When you see storms, you just see, uh-huh, I am seeing divine speed. I am seeing acceleration. I'm seeing this. Luck is coming like this. I am seeing prosperity come my way. I am seeing a lesson that I'm learning from this. This is the mind of the people who have seen the truth of the word of God. The word of God has convinced you. So your confession changes. Your talk changes. When people around you start talking, otherwise you tell them, shut up, shut up, shut up. That's not how we talk here. Amen. That's, we don't talk like that here. This is how we talk. When people say we are sick, we say by the stripes of Jesus Christ we are healed. Because we are not trying to look super, super. No, the word of God has convinced us enough. We believe. We will go back to that, 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 that second Corinthians as we get to wind up this morning. My time is really up. Second Corinthians in that TPT in the name of Jesus. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 14. The word of God is sweet. First I believed. Then I spoke. So. We cannot believe what we have not uh, encountered from the word of God. We have read the word of God. We have believed it. So we also first believe, then we speak. So I was talking about confession today. Amen. Amen. And talking about the force of faith that we use on a daily basis. And you need to do that by confessing, by speaking aloud, by acting on the word of God, by declaring it aloud. You are not afraid. You are not intimidated. Even if people tell you, why are you saying that you are healed and you're in pain? The conviction is too much. It's over, over, overriding the pain. It's overriding my feelings. Praise be to God. We don't walk by feelings. We walk by the spirit. We don't walk by sight. We walk by the spirit. Praise be to God. Are you the kind that walk by the spirit? Are you the kind that walk by, 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 by the leading of God? Are you the kind that walk in discernment? Praise be to God. Let's go to that verse. Praise be to God as we get to wind up in the name of Jesus. God is good. And his word is amazing. Verse 14. We do this because there must be a because. We are convinced that Jesus who raised us from the dead 
will be able to raise us up, will be able to deliver us, will be able to help us, will be able to help us in this journey, in this walk, in this world where there is trouble, where things work out against us a lot of times. What convinces you? What has been convincing you? What has been the factor that controls your thoughts, that controls your confession, your talking, your thinking? What convinces you? That's the word I'm leaving you with this morning. Let your words be because you are convinced by the word of God. The word of God is so alert, is so alive in you until pain is irrelevant when you remember how the word of God has convinced you. Praise be to God. When you look at your bank account, it doesn't look like what you're seeing. It doesn't look like what the word of God says concerning your life. You are not oppressed. You're not depressed. Amen. Some of us have a salary all our months. If we are removed from that salary, we get depressed. That's not your portion. Amen. The Bible says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. That's your father. Amen. Your father got it. You got to learn to trust him. Some of you have had a new walk of faith in this season of the COVID because you have realized that God can supply for you. I am glad you have grown. I am glad you're in a better place. Praise be to God. Why? We don't let things block our lives and block our minds. We just let the word of God convince us. What has been convincing you? What has caused you to talk the way you talk? What has caused you to speak the way you speak? Is it failure? Now, because you failed three times, five times, you think you're not cut out for business? The devil is a liar. Amen. You think you're not cut out as a singer because people rejected you in the worship teams? The devil is a liar. You got to realize what is the voice of God. You got to realize your molding moments. The days you're being molded, people may not like you. They may not embrace you, but you got to believe better. You got to trust better. You got to know what God spoke to you, what your grace is, what your strength is, what your assignment is, and walk in it nevertheless. Amen. Don't let your confession be affected. Change what convinces you. Change what convinces you. Change what causes you to judge things the way you judge things. If you've not been judging things based on the word of God, change that. Praise be to God. My time is up. Hallelujah. I'm glad that you were able to tune in this morning. I'm glad that you were part of the prayer and I'm glad that you were part of the word of God. Go in this understanding. Go knowing that James was writing and telling these people that there is a way there is a way. Let's go to that James 2. I, I just want us to finish with that in Jesus' name. James chapter 1 verse 2. There is a way that people who have been convinced by the word of God, there is a way they handle sin. There is a way they handle conflict. There is a way they handle moments of sorrow in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. James chapter 1 verse 2. As we get to wind up, praise be to God. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come your way, because troubles will come, he didn't say if troubles come. He says when troubles come. Don't pray away trouble. Don't wish away trouble. Trouble will come. But your positioning, because you walk in the force of faith, you realize you will trust God to do exploits on this earth because he gra his grace abounds in your life. When troubles come your way, consider it as an opportunity of great joy. Amen. Let people look at you and wonder how you're navigating life because of the joy you have. Because when you see trouble, you see God at work. You see God about to show up and show off. Hallelujah. You know that you are God's children. You know God shows himself through you. Amen. You, are, you ask God by day, God, where are you showing up today? God, what are you up to today? Where are we representing your kingdom today? You are part of that. Even if trouble comes, you know God has a better agenda in your life. You don't complain. You don't murmur. You don't run in panic. You know because the word of God has convinced you in Jesus' mighty name. We thank God for the time that you had this morning. And I'm glad that you were part of this broadcast in Jesus' mighty name. Probably your life is not, your life has not been surrendered to God. Your name is not written in the Lamb's book of life. I want to give you that opportunity to say this prayer after me and your name will immediately be written in the Lamb's book of life. Your sins will be forgiven. Amen. Not remembered anymore. The old will be in your past. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for forgiving my sins. I ask you today to write my name 
in the Lamb's book of life. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for loving me even when I didn't care. I appreciate you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you have prayed that prayer, your name is written in the book of life. We are excited here and we are glad that you have joined us. We are people that know their God and we are the people that do exploits because we know our placement in God. Your position right now is a son of God. Amen. The things that are in the word of God are your portion. And I want you to start reading the word of God from the New Testament. You can call the number on your screen. If you want us to walk with you, if you want us to guide you in the ways of the Lord, the number is 0721-556159. I repeat, 0721-556159. If you call us on that number, we will walk with you. We will mentor you. We will guide you. We will disciple you in the ways of the Lord. Please go tell somebody about it. Tell them I'm born again. I got saved this morning and I want to walk the walk of faith. Tell everybody. Tell your brothers. Tell your sisters. Let them stand with you and walk with you in the name of Jesus Christ. We do not end the broadcast without giving to the Lord. Amen and amen. God has been good to us. It doesn't matter the level of the provision that you have. You must give it back to God. It is trust. It is showing trust to him in Jesus' name. The tithe belongs to the Lord. The 10% belongs to the Lord. I admonish you to give it faithfully to the Lord. That belongs to God. It's not yours. Your offering is up to you to decide. But you decide it like a discerning person. A person who loves to be part of what God is doing. People have been faithful. You have been faithful to give. We appreciate that. The Lord bless and increase you in Jesus' mighty name. We want to give. And the pay bill number that we give to is 655 -1. I repeat, 655-125-125. Get your phone and type that and the Lord will bless you. If you want to give direct, if you're giving through via, uh, uh, via Wave or World Remit, the direct number to use is plus 254-721-556159. I repeat, plus 254-721-556159. Give cheerfully as unto the Lord. Do it willingly and you will see God bless you. You will see the favor of God over your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you all for tuning in this morning. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. I appreciate that you, st uh, you stayed on to the very end. The Lord richly bless you. May he order your steps. May he govern your path. May he lead you in uh, every place that you will go today in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember you are the head and not the tail. Above only and not beneath. That we walk by faith. We walk by the force of faith to accomplish everything we need to accomplish in life. Faith is the weapon that we use as believers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Don't forget that. God bless you. You're welcome every time we have sessions going on here. Every Monday we have the Commonwealth at 3 p.m. You're welcome to tune in. Every evening on Monday at 8 p.m. we have the Shepherd's Staff. You're welcome to tune in. Then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday our services are at 6 p.m. You are welcome to be part of the Tuesday Victory Service every Tuesday. Then the Winds of Worship on Wednesday. Then on Thursday we have the School of Faith. Then on Friday in the evening at 8 p.m. we have a Zoom session for the young people. You can log in, check the ID on our social media platforms and you can log in and be blessed in Jesus name. Then on Sunday we have three services 8.30 a.m. Then immediately after that at 9.30 we have the children's church. Bring in your children. Let them be taught the word of God. Then after that at 10.30 we have the main service in the at 10.30. Then in the evening we have the three o'clock service. You are welcome to be part of that. Keep feeding on the word of God. Amen. That will drive what you speak. You speak before because you hear, right? So keep feeding on the word of God. You will see your faith grow. You will see yourself overcome situations and, st and storms that come in your life. In Jesus' mighty name, you are blessed. You are favored of the Lord. Shalom, Irene. Peace and prosperity. Nothing missing. Nothing lacking. Nothing shall be broken in your life. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Give me this song.